Uh, as you can see, there's a lot going on right now, and I want to touch bases on a couple of things. I want to talk about your proposals because this is the last chance I'll get to before your proposals are due. So if you have any questions about the three topic proposals, all right, ask them now because they're due Sunday night. Um, if you need a review of how to do them in Moodle under Module 1, look at the video lecture for September 14th. That's the one that I went through and explained everything in detail. But are there any general questions that any of you might have? All right, good. So you have your three ideas. Your three countries in the world. Yes. Three people that you want to study. All right. Okay. All right. And your um, IPC theories that you want to utilize. All right. Oh, well, I'm impressed. Good. All right. You guys did uh, a good job on the Martin Pistorius analysis. Uh, two things I realized. Number one is you are getting it, and that makes me feel very happy. Um, the second thing is not only are you getting it, but you're starting to get the details. You're starting to understand how important words are uh, in terms of how we communicate to ourselves as well as to others. And that all contributes to a building of our self-esteem, our self-awareness, our self-understanding. So uh, this is the longest module. It's the most important module uh, for you to be able to get that to understand interpersonal communication. All right. So on, um, oh wait, I have to get something. I know that you here attending class on Tuesday, I know you won't be here on Thursday, but the people watching this video who will be here on Thursday, um, this is about you, um, but I also want to give the same opportunity to these people. So here's what's going to happen. On Thursday, you're going to have a guest visitor. And the visitor is going to ask you three questions about the course and about me teaching the course. This is what we call a fact assessment, which stands for a formative assessment of content teaching. All right. And so this is what some of us teachers do to really hone in on our methodologies. And as we talk about this later in the course, you're going to see that I, like you, am continuously trying to improve. And as you could probably tell, I really don't like teaching during COVID. I would really rather be in the room with you, interacting, talking, exploring, having you guys facilitate discussions, etc. But given the situation and the fact that you are taking other courses, I'm hoping that maybe you can give some important feedback to our guest speaker. Now, I will not be here, all right? Uh, I'm going to introduce you to this, the um, facilitator. She's going to ask you these three questions. So if you, um, actually four questions. If you are sitting here right now and you still want to give feedback, I'm going to send you an email with the instructor's name. And you can send your comments, answers directly to her. I won't see them. This is all confidential. So what she does is she compiles the data from what you might send through an email as well as what the students on Thursday are going to contribute um, to the discussion about me. Um, and then she's going to compile that all up so nobody sees any names 
and then she's going to give me my feedback, all right? And that's going to help me to make adjustments for the course for the remainder of the semester. All right, so I hope you will really, really take this seriously and give some feedback. So she's going to ask question number one, what do you like most about the course? Question number two is, um, what about the course and the teaching that you would like to see changed or improved? And uh, the third one is, what specific suggestions can you offer to make this learning experience better? And the last one is about the videos. Um, do you feel the video lectures um, are beneficial? And do you even watch them? Why or why not? Okay. So uh, again, I'm going to send these to all of you so that you are prepared to answer them on Thursday and or through email so that we get as much feedback as we can. And I appreciate you doing that. All right. Also, reminder that uh, we're almost done. So October 4th, you will have to have all of your extra credit completed along with your module one test. Remember, you have your two tries to get the highest grade on that test. So um, make sure that you are taking both attempts, all right? But there is a four hour delay. So if you try and do two of them on the same day, there's a four hour delay between the end of one attempt and the beginning of your second attempt. So keep that in mind. All right, so uh, there is a lecture that I actually gave to my um, 120 class um, section on Tuesday, yesterday, that I'm going to post, actually it's right here, uh, I'm gonna post it for Thursday because on Thursday you won't be here and the people who will be here are going to be doing this other activity. So this is all about the Myers-Briggs type indicator. It is about personality profiling, personality assessments, personality tools. There is a PowerPoint that goes along with it. Uh, that PowerPoint is also included in Moodle. And um, it's the same information that's going to help you be informed about the MBTI that you participated in for the discussion forum. Now, hopefully, those of you who did uh, discussion forum B, you've opened up your email and you've seen an email from me today. So if not, open up your emails and take a look at it. If you did not complete this discussion forum, you still may send me your MBTI um, results and I will give you this report. All right, so all of you should see a report. All right, do you all see your reports? Did you open them up? Should see a PDF document. Yes? All right, 
for those of you um, who didn't do this, I'm going to actually put it up on the board. I'm going to show one of them for you. All right, so one more time. All right, so what you see here is a page that was taken out of the guidebook that I use in my consulting practice to work with people, especially in leadership, who have gotten uh, completed the MBTI analysis and now they want to know what it means so when you go back and you look at the lecture that uh, I presented yesterday it's going to give you a broad brush understanding of personality theories and the different key players in the history and the currency of personality theory uh, today so what you have received is a targeted report card, so to speak, that talks about your predispositions. And if not predispositions, another word to think about it is your tendencies. And another word is your preferences. Now, the MBTI report is not um, all psychology. Uh, reports are um, valid and reliable when they are done at the level of research that Myers and Briggs have done uh, but they're not necessarily a guarantee so these are going to talk in terms of your predispositions or your tendencies or if you have a choice what's going to be your preference and how you're going to respond in different activities all right, so in our, of the four people in class who took this, we have what's known as an INTJ, an ENTP, an ISTP, and an INFJ. So that means that all four of you are different, special, unique, and based on those unique qualities, you are always important contributors to an organization because you are different from others. Now, some of these are more common than others, um, and um, I, I tend to use the INFJ. Um, we don't have any up here, but the reason I pulled up the INFJ is because that's my prototype. So those are my letters. I'm going to use that to help explain. All right. So what you see here is um, what's known as a work label. Or if we were to be looking at leadership qualities, um, we would see that this person with these letters falls under a foreseer. So if you look at your report that I sent to you, you will see that there is what's known as a work label, and there are those bullets at the top that indicate the, the most common generalities associated with your type, all right? Um, so, as in this case, this person tends to be more uh, forceful, a little bit quiet, uh, concerned for others, likes to work for the common good, uh, I like to put my best effort into every work. Yep, I am competitive and want to be the top and the best. And I oftentimes have a very single-minded concentration. Um, that can be a positive. It can also turn out to be a negative. So let's take a look at that. If you continue to look at your report, your report is going to have a list of strengths and a list of opportunities. Now, those strengths... You need to grab them 
hold on tight to them and remember them so that if anybody um, tries to put you down or disses you or um, reads you the riot act or whatever it might be, you can always say, yes, I have opportunities for improvement, all right, opportunities for growth. However, I do have these core strengths, and these core strengths are what me, make me special and important and valuable and a contributor to a team and all those important things. So always hold on to your strengths. Don't let them go. So if we take a look for how do we raise our self-esteem, one of those is to keep our eye on the positives. No matter if somebody tears us down or if we make a mistake, it's okay. Pick yourself back up and remember your strengths, all right? Now on the other side, you're gonna see there's opportunities for growth. Well, yeah. None of us are perfect. We are humans. And as human beings, we are imperfect individuals. We have lots of opportunities for growth. Personal growth, educational growth, um, academic growth, uh, um, job growth, all those things. Do not see those as weaknesses. You notice it doesn't even say weaknesses, and that's one of the things that always makes me crazy when people say strengths and weaknesses. No! These are not weaknesses. These are opportunities, all right? And by that, I mean, yeah, it's just a play on words, but what it is is I can turn one of those areas needing improvement into something that's really positive. Now, let me give you an example. I was a bitch in my early years in management. Uh, I had high turnover in my department. I had employees going to human resources complaining about me. I had uh, attitudes from one or two uh, employees. And honestly, I hated going to work because I, I felt like all the employees were against me. Well, through going through a, a leadership development training, going into learning my MBTI, I discovered that the problem was with me. Sure, the others had their own opportunities, but I needed to stop blaming others. And I need to take an account of my behaviors, what I said and how I said it, what I didn't say and what I should have said, et cetera, et cetera. And through an evolutionary process, I went from being the biggest bitch in the world on the, on the planet, really, um, in my job, to through about 10 years of personal growth and development and change and practice and more change and really getting into who I was and not trying to be what others wanted me to be. Then my last job that I held as a senior vice president, still meeting the demands, still managing a $3.2 million annual budget, still managing over a thousand employees in a manufacturing environment. Uh, had employees really sad to see me leave. Um, it was time because uh, I was going into retirement, we sold the company, and I needed to move on and make room for another person who bought the company to come in. Uh, but the send off and the scrapbook that they made for me of all of our accomplishments and wins and uh, fun times and craziness and all those things. Um, and the contact that they kept in with me demonstrated that all of those opportunities I had at the beginning, I had been able to turn them now into positives, which is why I like to teach now, because I like to teach you guys to not make the same mistakes that I did. Now, I want you to look um, farther down on your report, and there's going to be some important things there to note. And so when you are out there in the job 
and you are interviewing for a potential position in a company, there's things that you need in order for you to be successful. And you can look at the environment and the people interviewing you and the other employees uh, on the job to get a feel if your needs are going to be met, right? Because your needs are just as important as the company's needs, all right? So um, look at what it says. It says to function best, your letters need, all right? And then it gives a whole long list of things that are important to you. And you know that if you have a working culture with a supervisor who empowers and creates opportunities for these needs to be met, you're on the road to success, okay? That's how you build your self-esteem. You place yourself in the right company, right? Or the right uh, study group or the right degree for your course and getting uh, a final degree, etc. Now, here is what will frustrate the heck out of you. This is what will make you pull your hair out. This is going to want to make you, you know, uh, you know, curse. This is what's going to make you just hate going to work, etc. And the things that really frustrate you are then listed right there. So you look at them. And when you're in a job interview, you ask questions to find out if those frustrations are going to end up being present on the job. Um, now, they irritate others. Okay, personally, I think you could take out irritate and you could just say, this is how you piss off people. All right. You piss off people by whatever is stated next. Not all the time. This isn't guaranteed for 100%. But what this is, is your predisposition, all right, of how you're going to behave. And so when you look at that, I want you to think about when you had coworkers, instructors, parents, family members, anybody else who got really upset with you. And the reason is probably right here. Okay. Um, and then there's how what you value. And we're going to talk about values later in the course. But values, uh, remember the little overview that I gave you on culture. Values are the things that you hold near and dear to you. And you need to feel like you are giving value as well as you are being a valuable person. Um, and having high self-esteem. And then on a team, it shows how you work on a team. Now, many of you are going to be I's, which means, um, and depending on the number, all right? So now I'm going to close this out. Close. All right, so you see me now, right? I'm not sharing the screen anymore. All right, so um, these are your letters, and for each of the letters, there's going to be a number, all right? So I'm just going to pick some, uh, a random one, INFJ. All right, for each one of these, there is another number, another letter, all right? So it's either an I or an E. And then there's a different one for this, a different one for that, a different one for this. And you can see that on um, the um, information, right? Now, if we look at this, what happens is there is on a continuum, all right, introvert, extrovert with a zero point. If you have a very high number going from zero to 100, all right, 
So for instance, my eye is way up here in the 70, 80 range. All right. That means that I have clarity. I am very clear in understanding what I need and what I'm about. So at the end of the day, after I've done my teaching or I've talked to people or whatever, I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to play my video games or read a book. I don't even talk to my husband. Right? That's how I get energized. So the I doesn't mean that I am, um, I don't like people. It means that in order for me to be prepared to get enough energy back in me for the next day on the job, I need downtime. I need alone time. I need to just be all by myself. All right. Now, those of you who are E's, oh no, you're not like that at all. In fact, I think um, we only had we only have a few E's. Walker, you're an E. Um, I wonder what your number is if your number is high. Do you remember what your number is, Walker? Uh, I don't remember. Just not on the E. No, it won't be on what I said. It'll be on your original report. Well, if you are a high E, all right, if your numbers are really, I would say, 50 plus, you're dying during this COVID situation. You are not happy. You want to be out there. You want to take that mask and shove it. You want to take social distance and shove it. All right. If you are an E in this arena, you're struggling with the um, need to be away from people because you get energized, you feel a lot of um, motivation and a lot of uh, inspiration with interacting with others. Does that sound like you, Walker, at all? A little bit? Yeah. Okay. So, and if your number is way up there in the hundreds, then you especially need to be interacting with a lot of people. So hopefully you're doing your Snapchats, your Instagrams, your whatever else you, you, you need to do to stay connected. So each one of these has an opposite. And the only reason I want you to recognize this is because of the number. The number simply means you have a high degree of clarity of what you need. If your number is in this range, it means that you can operate pretty easily in both worlds or that you are still working on gaining the kind of understanding of yourself for better clarity. Okay, so um, that's what I wanted to talk to you about MBTI a little bit more specifically. Um, well, let me show you one more thing. Now, the thing to recognize is um, and you can um, can you see this right now? Probably not. Oh, well, um, there are all these different types. I won't show it to you. It's not necessary. Um, and like I said, there are actually 16 different Myers-Briggs type indicators. Um, and again, it's indicator, doesn't mean guarantee. All right, so in your textbook, it talks about how do you improve your self-esteem. And there's lots of different techniques. Uh, one of the things that I want you to notice is that remember that you're Myers-Briggs, as an indicator, does not guarantee. So don't use it as a scapegoat. Don't use it as an excuse for poor behavior. Don't uh, claim it to be your schemata, um, which is um, a set of information uh, down on page 53 that's based on your knowledge and your experience um, that guide your interactions. Don't don't blame poor behavior on this. 
because you still have the ability to make good choices in how you behave. Now, um, I want you to also be aware of something that's known as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, this is a concept that's been proven extensively. That if you believe something's going to happen, then you're going to, with another person, so to speak, then you are going to act out in a way that's going to bring it to truth. All right? So let me give you an example. If you are a manager and you have a bias against African Americans and you have five employees, four of them are white, one's African American. And if that bias is inherent and you, you know, try not to acknowledge it, you try to ignore it, you try to say or deny it, you know, the Jahari window. Um, and yet, what happens oftentimes is that you will give the best jobs, the best assignments, the best opportunities to the white guys. And you'll give the shitty ones to the African American because your bias is you don't want to waste the good assignments on somebody who won't follow through. All right. Um, and that can be dangerous. Those kinds of um, inherent biases or real biases. Here's another one. Let's say you have five employees again and four of them are uh, university graduates, but one of them is not. In fact, one of them um, is only a high school diploma. And you, as the manager, you also only have a high school diploma. And all those four people with university degrees, they think they are tough shit, but you know better. They just thought they could walk right into the job with their little piece of paper and be really good. Well, you know, like the guy who has the um, diploma, um, not a degree, and you know that that person works his butt off twice as hard as anybody else, just like you did, all right? So you are going to ensure that that person with the high school diploma is going to get every break possible. You're going to make the other one. Eh. You are going to make that person be successful, just like somebody looked after you to help you be successful. Okay. Those are all self-fulfilling prophecies. Um, and there are many, many different kinds out there. So here are some ways to make sure that you have good uh, self-esteem. Number one, make sure that the relationships you are in are positive and what we call healthy. Mutually healthy. Healthy for you and for the other person. When we get into conflict resolution, we're going to find out how you handle conflict and how your significant others handle conflict. And um, you want to make sure that you are both handling conflict in a very healthy manner. You aren't um, um, sabotaging or undermining or being hypercritical, etc. We also want you to um, be careful of what's known as the halo versus the horns effect. Halo versus horns, all right? One of those is, if you do one thing well, does everybody now treat you as if you are the queen or the king? Um, or conversely, did you one make mistake and not everybody thinks you're a piece of crap? and they don't trust you, and they don't want to be with you, they don't want to work on the same team as you, okay? Those are called the halo and the horn effects, and basically it means that one 
incident or event overshadows, okay, casts a shadow, so to speak, on everything else and doesn't give people the benefit of the doubt. So if you are subject to making one mistake, don't let people then think that you're always going to be um, a poor performer. So what you want to do is to come back, work on your self-esteem, to build up your credibility so that others will believe in you again. But also don't sit back on your laurels just because you happen to make one really good big sale and think, oh, I don't have to work hard anymore. No, you still have to continue to demonstrate that you are worthy of whatever the position is you have. Um, I also want you to think about who is what we call nourishing people. Who do you have as your group of friends who build you up, who feed you honest feedback for your personal growth, who enable you to be the best that you can be, all right? Do you seek these people out and maintain good, healthy relationships with them? Now, be careful. Or do you have people who are toxic? All right. They use a lot of what we call snarl words at you. Nourishing people use purr words towards you to help you feel good. Toxic people will use snarl kinds of words at you to make you feel bad. In other words, they try and put you down, usually try to put themselves up. Uh, another thing to do for your self-esteem is to seek out and to listen to positive statements about you. So in that Jahari window, remember that blind box we talked about and that oftentimes people will say good things about you to you and you discount it or you say, nah, you just have to say that because you're my mom or you just have to say that. Don't ever do that. When somebody takes the energy to give you an affirmation, to affirm, to reinforce, something that you say and that you do well. The proper response is, thank you. And then you think about it and you internalize it and you make it a part of what you go back to if you need a pick me up, right? Um, And um, the last thing I'm going to do, and then I'm going to, we're going to do a ticket to leave, um, is to talk a little bit about the whole concept of how are you toward yourself? Are you, you, your own best, oh, best friend? Are you a best friend? to yourself or do you put yourself down in front of others or just when you're talking to yourself? What kind of scripts, all right, do you rely on that actually do more harm to your self-esteem than help? This is an important one. And if you journal um, on your own, you might in a weekend just think about every time you catch yourself saying a negative thought to yourself about yourself. Write it down. Catch it. Throw it away. Literally. You write it down. Oh my gosh, I just said to myself, I'm such a dummy. I can't do this homework. Write it down, take out the piece of paper, literally crumble it up, 
and throw it in the newspaper and say, well, that's not true. I'm not a dummy and I can do this. Power of words. All right. All right, let's do a ticket to leave. I'm going to turn off the uh, thing right